Welcome to Books on Air, the podcast that tells the story behind the book. It includes insights from authors about how they compose their work, what inspires them, and what they hope you'll take away from their book. Here's your host for this episode of Books on Air, Suzanne Harris. Welcome to the Books on Air podcast. I'm Sloan Fremont filling in for Suzanne Harris. This is a podcast where listeners get the secret story behind every book. Joining me today is Joy Ballantyne, author of the book, AFM. AFM is both an adventure and a love story, and Joy is going to tell us all about it. Joy, welcome to the Books on Air podcast. Thank you so much, Sloan. So let's start out by telling the audience a little bit about yourself and what led you to write your book, AFM. Um, I was born and raised in New England. You can probably tell by the funny accent. Um, and I sat down at my computer and I always start with one line and I see where it goes. And my grandfather had antique bikes and my dad had some bikes. So I figured, well, why not? We'll see what happens with this. And that's, that's how it started. And away you went. So tell us what the title AFM means. AFM stands for all fucking mine. (laughs) Um, the, the woman in the story was engaged to an SOB and he sold her bike and her car. So she bought Mm -hmm. another car and she went to register it and she's in the town office. And the woman says, well, you can have vanity plates if you want. She says, okay. And what do you want them to say? And she says, AFM. And the woman behind the glass, who is very snooty says, and what does that stand for? And she says, all (laughs) fucking mine. And the woman about shit herself right then and there, but that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so that's, that's the gist of that. <laughs> but she's going okay. it her way and it's, and it's all hers and she got her stuff back and that's what she wanted. You know, Yeah. she fought for herself or she was with the, the SOB for three years and he mm. changed her and made her not what she was. And she owns a motorcycle shop and the guys that work for her saw this happening and they'd, they joke with her and, and, you know, give her a little bit of a hard time, but they weren't mean about it. And um, the, the other main character is Axel and he's her head mechanic. Mm-hmm. And this is their love story. Okay. Okay. So can you set the scene for us a little bit and tell us where it takes place and what time period? It takes place now and it takes place in the South. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, you know, the, the, the man that she was supposed to marry his name is uh, Roland and she tried to call him Roly, but she's <laughs> from New York. So it came out Raleigh. So, and, and mama thought that was funny. So mama calls him Raleigh too. And you know, she, I rolls a lot at mama. Um, mm-hmm. her, her wedding day was planned by mama. Her dresses were all chosen by mama and her friggin' hair. Oh, my love and Jesus was <laughs> planned by mama. So she's got pin curls. Oh my God. She's got enough equipment in her hair to keep the (laughs) pins in, you know, to keep the curls in. Right. Um, And she makes an agreement with Axel that he is supposed to show up at the church at 10 15. And he says, what are you planning? And she says, revenge. (laughs) Oh, oh. so tell us what's the main character's name? Bridget. Bridget. Bridget and they, and her nickname is Brie. Okay. And, um, yeah, and and she became Bridget with Roland, and Bridget and Brie are they're this obviously they're the same person, but they're two separate people. Yeah. And yeah. Axel, Axel tells her point blank, "I want Brie back." Bridget's yeah. Okay, but I like Brie. Brie's fun. You know, Bridget has a pull up her ass, so. Yeah. And I think that's something most women can relate to, right? Being with somebody, I mean, we've all been there most likely where we were in a relationship that sucked or that the person wasn't good for us. And we almost, we become this different version of ourselves, this different person. And then, you know, you're around other people and they're like, what happened to you? And it's like, you don't even notice it. Yeah. You used to be fun. And right. What, 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 did somebody smack you? Did you get dropped on your head as a child? What happened? No. Right. Where um, did the old you go? Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and it, 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 and she, she, she finds herself through Axel and the guys at the garage and the bar they go to is called Chaps. And, you know, she, she has fun when she goes there and her friend, her best friend Callie comes for a visit and they go out and they have a good time. And, 
she gets back to herself, mm-hmm. you know, and it, mm-hmm. it's, it's a good read. There's a lot in it. You know, I, I can't, there's a lot in it. Um, yeah. But it, it, you know, the main gist is Axel and Brie. Yeah. You know? And so tell us some of your favorite parts that you got to write about in the book. The motorcycles. I love the old bikes. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked writing about the bar. That was fun. Chaps. That was fun. Um, some of the other characters, because they're, they're, they're very Southern. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I, I live I, in the I, south. I get it. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, I'm. I'm right now. I'm in North Carolina, so I fully understand. Um, they don't quite get northern humor. Mm-hmm. They mean to, and they'll giggle and laugh and smile. And you're looking at them going, "There's not a bubble in there anywhere that understood <laughs> what I was saying." You know, mm-hmm. um, and it's there. The, her. Um, Roland's family is very, we know everything about everything. Ask us because we, we, we are, you know, town shit here. We know all about right. all. And, right. you know, three hours away, they've never heard of these people. Right. <laughs> right. So they're, you know, they're, they're small fish in a big pond. Right. Um, and it, it's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, you know, and, and there's the, um, her maid of honor was going to be, a relative's wife and you know she did whatever the husband said and it was yes dear no dear mm-hmm. do, do you never have an original thought ever right I mean, wow right. bad so you know it, it's crazy um well and it sounds like your book is very relatable very relatable for women who th- various phases we went through in our lives and the things that you learn along the way, right? Those the important lessons that you learn and there's no other way to learn it than experience it. Exactly. And, you know, and, and the way I write or the way I try to write anyway, is that I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm. These people are having a conversation. We're listening to their conversation and we too are rolling our eyes, scratching right. our heads and going, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> Right, right. What so, the hell happened there? You know, so. Right. Well, and that's like real life with friends or you know family members. Exactly. You know, you do that in real life, and it's like, and, and you know, it's it's funny because it's it's always so easy to um, look at other people and think what the fuck, or right. look at yes. you know. But yes. then when we look at our own selves, we can't see it. You know. Right. Exactly. You're living it. You're going no, that no, no. There's, there's no way that's me. And then you're you're out of it. And you're going oh god, that was so me. You know? right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's like, oh my God, why didn't I listen? Well, hindsight right. is 20, 20, always, you know? Yes. Oh yes. Totally. I totally get that. And I think probably most of the listeners are laughing and shaking their heads because they probably have been yeah. in a similar situation. Exactly. We all, we all know, we all know someone like Roland. We all know someone like Axel. We all know someone like Bree and a few of the other characters. We all know people, you know, yeah. like them. And it's like, okay, that was my best friend that was her boyfriend, you know, and that was the situation they were in at the time. And this happened so we can change it and make it this way, you know, and, and that's the fun of writing. You can make whatever you want happen, happen. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That having, letting that creativity flow and, and really taking, like we've been saying, these relatable real life situations and being able to weave them together to tell a story that, it, it sounds like that um, you really enjoyed writing and also that you've been able to, you know, create these characters in these, this story in such a way that everybody who picks up the book will relate to it. Exactly. I hope so. I mean, I, I had an absolute ball right in this. You yeah. Know? It was when I got done with it, it was over 600 pages. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. And it's like, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> right. How, how thick is this flipping book going to be? And we, and when you go back and edit it, you're like, I don't know what she was thinking, but we're not doing that. So you delete a couple pages. Right. And, oh, okay. Now it makes sense, you know? Right. Um, and then it, you know, it progresses from there and you get it set up and it's like, okay, I think this is good to sell. I think right. I'm hoping think so, you know, and, and my publisher seemed to like it. So we went from that, you know? Right. Yeah. And so when you're going through that process, what surprised you the most about writing your book? Um, I think that anybody actually wanted to buy it, <laughs> you know, cause like yeah. I said, it's, it's me talking 
basically I talk to myself a lot, um, but it's me talking and explaining situation. And I, I give a lot of detail in the book because I want people to know what's going on and what, what's being worn and what's being said and what the I atmosphere know. is, you know? And I, you know, I've had, a, I had a couple of people read it prior to sale and they're like, well, you know, you don't have to explain that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do. Cause if I right. don't, you can be like, well, what was she doing? You know, well, hello, it's all answered. <laughs> right. Right. You know, you know I ask, I do a lot of these interviews and I ask that question to most people about what surprised them about writing their book. And most people say the same thing that they're surprised that they actually wrote it or they're surprised that anybody actually wanted to read it. And I'm always amazed by that though, because we all have this doubt within ourselves, right? But when we, when we move past that and we're able to, you know, use our creativity and shine and, and put our creativity out into the world it's it's so it's just think of every person on the earth listen to that voice that said they couldn't do it then we wouldn't have anything we wouldn't have any books right we wouldn't have any yeah you know exactly we would all keep it all in so congratulations to you for moving past that and and getting your book out there thank you so much you know and and my in my own head i'm thinking stephen king got rejected how many flipping years before he sold anything so I'm not doing that bad. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and, you know, you just keep moving forward. It's just like a, an analogy for life. You know, we just keep moving exactly. forward and, and doing, exactly. putting ourselves out there. Adapt, adjust and move forward. That's you right. Know, you kind of have to, and you, you got to push yourself to do what you're uncomfortable with because yeah. it's not going to be bad. It's going to be fine. It always works itself out. That's just that's right. life. You know, that's, that's yeah, that's so right. And, you know, it's, it's uh, just listening to you talk about it and just your upbeat voice and your, um, <laughs> your really, I feel just, you're very relatable. Like we've you know only just met, but I, I do feel like I know you and I, it's such an easy conversation with you. So I, I can imagine it, it, your, your writing style being the same and then really drawing is, the reader it, in that way. Exactly. When I, when I write, like I said, I'm talking to the reader mm-hmm. and I try to make it make sense because I've written some stuff going, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> How many rum and cokes did I have? You know, right. um, and one, don't do that. <laughs> do not sit in front of the computer with a rum and coke and say, we're going to write today because it never comes out good. Oh my God. Um, but, you know, it, it's, I try, I, I try to make it as relatable as possible and as user-friendly as possible um I had one guy one friend of mine read it he's like you know you swear a lot I said it's a fucking garage what do you want you know good god right right really well you don't have to shut up just stop talking to me you know oh my head (laughs) so who would you say your book would appeal to and why I think it would it would appeal to anybody that's ever owned a motorcycle Mm -hmm. um anybody that's ever owned an old car Mm -hmm. um anybody that's been in love had a fight with their spouse or their intended or ever you know had a fit at a wedding and just didn't want to be there (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of the one of the points in in the book is you know the the preacher who's a pompous son of a bitch um (laughs) gets to the point of does anybody object brie raises her own hand (laughs) at her own wedding at her own wedding and that's why axel picks her up at 10 15 you know it, it's like okay that yep and, it, and when i'm writing it i'm going this is good <laughs> yeah yeah well i imagine you get in the characters right? you can actually feel and experience that i, I would think as exactly. you're writing exactly all my all my female characters my, my main characters are little bits of me some of them yeah. have blonde hair green eyes they're five seven that's me yeah. Um, other than that, you know, there's little, there's little other things like they, their hair can't hold the curl. Mine can't either. You know, um, Mine can't either. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I, oh my totally God. Get it. Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. It's like, you, you know, you, you sit for days with curlers, you pull it out 20 minutes later. It's like, oh, that was fun. It's arrow straight. Thank you. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they don't, they don't wear a lot of makeup. Neither do I, they wear a lot of jewelry. Well, so do I, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. but it, it's little, little bits and pieces, you know? Yeah. And um, they, they're, I, you know, me, myself, and I, I think they're all good people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? that sounds and like it. It sounds like I said, like a really fun read. Yeah, um, and, and, and yeah, definitely, definitely. 
What do you want the readers to take away after reading your book? I want them to know that there is love and there's hope and don't quit. You know, don't, don't give up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, such an important message, you know, and, and so simple, but so important to remind people of and to remember and to, um, you know, just like we talked about with the writing process and yes, self -doubt yes, yes, that a lot of us yes. feel, it doesn't have to be about writing. It could be about anything in life, but being able exactly. to remember, um, you know, everybody's goes through it. You're not alone. And, right. um, like you said, you can do it. Like you can do these things. It'll work itself out. It out. And it's weird karma or whatever you want to call it. It, it eventually things work the way they're supposed to, no yes. matter what it is. Right. It might take a while, but you will eventually get to it, you know, yeah. and, and get to the right area that you're supposed to be at, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it, it, I, I totally agree. Hard, you know, and, and, um, you know, like I said, it, it's, th there's hope and there's love and there's, there's laughter in this book and, there's, you know, there's fighting in this book and there's revenge, which I love, um, you know, and, it, and it's all good. It's all good stuff. It's all good. And you, you learn about his family and why mama is the way she is. And, you know, it, it, it explains it's all in, in the crazy amount of pages. It's all explained. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like such an amazing book and just again, so relatable. And um, anytime, it, you know, you, you, you can always relate to something when a story is being told. Like it's like we were talking about, like when you see yes. somebody else going through it, it's very yes. easy to relate to. Yes. And so exactly. it sounds like your book has captured that. And um, it sounds like an amazing story. I thank you so much. And I, I hope everybody goes out and gets a copy. They're available at Amazon. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so I'll link to that in the show notes for the listeners so they can easily find it. And um we're coming up on time, Joy. So okay. I guess it's time to wrap up, but it's been so great to talk to you today. Um, talk and, to and, you too. Yeah. And thank you for coming on. Is there any closing thought you want to leave the readers with today um, to make sure that they know about you or your book? I, I have, um, I had another book come out a few years ago called Slow Hands. That was my mm -hmm. first book. I wrote it in three weeks. So oh, wow. it's pretty much self-explained um, why it is the way it's written. Um, and then AFM is my second and I have another one coming out called wake and okay. I'm not sure when that's coming, but hopefully soon. So okay. amazing. <laughs> those, are, those are my three. So, um, but just please enjoy the book. It's, it's made for everyone. Even if you don't like motorcycles, read it anyway. It's a good <laughs> story. It's a really good story. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it is. And Joy, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and being our guest on Books on Air. Thank you so much, Sloan. This was great. Yes, a lot of fun. And you can find out more about the book AFM on Amazon, as we mentioned, and I'll link to that in the show notes. So be sure to check that out. You've been listening to the Books on Air podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. I'm Sloan Fremont, and I hope you'll join us for the next Books on Air podcast. Remember, you never know who's going to be here, and you never know what we're going to talk about. Thank you so much for listening.